Hi guys! Today I want to share some information and knowledge about brush soap, paint brushes, storage of paint brushes and maintaining your brush and especially with a heavy focus on extending the lifetime of your brush in this video. Um, there are a lot of myths out there regarding brush care, what you should avoid, what you should definitely do, what you should never do. And today, based on my experience and conversations I had over the years with fellow painters, I want to share some of this and summarize this for you. This video is quite long uh, for a video just telling you, okay, please do this, please do that. But I, if you can look below, you will find a little overview about the different sections. So if you're particularly interested in the real hand to hand information um, about how to clean your brush, just jump to the section. Because for the overall understanding, I think it's necessary to give you some background information about the paints we use, the soap in general, and how a brush is created and what materials, especially hair type. Before we start with the cleaning, I would love to give you some information, basic information, how to maintain your brush. So I would definitely recommend that you keep your brush somewhere safe. So what I have is a little bag where I have my brushes sorted. This is just my storage. Of course, when I paint regularly, I have my brushes on a little tableau or put somewhere where the hairs do not have contact with something. And for longer storage, especially when they are on the desk, just like rolling around at you, this type of person, I can really recommend keep the caps of your brush because this gives you the buffer you need. If your brush gets smashed or accidentally stays for a while closer to an obstacle, a paint pot or whatsoever, it will bend and the hair will bend and it's very difficult to get the brush back in shape. So especially with more expensive brands, um, please, please use your cap. That's perfect. Additionally, after your paint job, um, people tend, still tend to put your, your brush like this into, into a cup and leave it there. And that's bad because all the fluid and the moisture in the, in the, in the, in the, in the hair will start slowly, I mean, of course, evaporate, but will also flow down into the ferrule. And that will eventually um, reduce the lifetime of your brush. You should also never put your brush of course like this, but this is I think common knowledge uh, because they have a bend. Do not keep them in water, do not put them on the heater. Yeah, some people attend, okay, I need to dry my brush. If you put this on the heater, um, this will heat unevenly and the heat is too much for the hair. It will usually cause the hair to frizzle and to even sometimes break and, and, let, and it dries the hair out too much. So don't put your brush on a heater. Yeah? So the best way, the officially best way, would be to hang your brushes like this. Yeah? There are certain like um, springs and paint and, and brush holders where you can just like clip your brushes in and they hang free in the air. They have enough air circulating around, everything is good. This is the best way. I do not have that. For me, I do not have that space on my, my working desk. So I just keep them lying flat, but with a cap after a thorough cleaning process. So talking about a structure of um, the paintbrush, I do not want to go into these details too much. I will mainly focus on the top part. This metal part here, the ferrule uh, in the art context, um, connects the hair to the handle. It's crimped below to keep it in place and the hair is usually inside here and bound by uh, by wires or glued together depending on the quality of, of a paintbrush. The hair they use for paintbrushes is usually taken from mink or from sable. Um, you will hear words like Kolinsky and Siberia and all these kind of things. These refer to different type of these kind of animals. Especially um, Kolinsky is getting a little bit more questionable. It's a mink from Siberia where um, the, the conditions the animals are held are not the best. 
so I would try not to buy at this point if you are looking a little bit for animal safety and support not buy Kulinski brushes anymore because it's very difficult to really find a brand um, which is um, respecting the yeah the the right animal treatment sable it's the tail hair from a sable is widely used um, both hair types are very high quality hair they are very fine, they are fine tempered um, and especially for aquarelle, uh, water watercolor paints, um, the, 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 the Kolinsky, um, Kolinsky type of hair is used because it's very soft and it holds a huge amount of water in the lower part of the, the paintbrush. This hair has also the advantage of being very flexible, it will not break. Um, it will hold the water and the paint mixture in very nicely and it keeps usually a fine tip. That's why people, why we are using this kind of hair and not human hair, for example. For different types of other art, camel hair, boar hair is widely used if you need something more sturdy. But for our miniature painting um, type, um, sable hair and mink hair are the ones to go and usually widely used. In addition to the natural hair, artificial hair, synthetic hair is also used and um, honestly um, the companies are making great progress with these kind of products. Um, I think still at this point for me the natural hair is much more preferable than synthetic hair but I use synthetic brushes for oils for example or for animals and other um, yeah, more specific um, paints, but for acrylic paints in general, I still stick with um, natural hair. But don't underestimate um, synthetic brushes, even for things like oil paint, um, because you can you can clean them much more easily, and you do not have to be too careful with that. And they are usually cheaper. So what ha what happens when you when you put brain in paint <laughs> put paint in your paintbrush? You have your water paint mixture, you dilute it and you put your, your, your brush, um, brush into it. The paint will of course, through, through the fine and thousands of fibers and fine kennels, um, uh, in up to the hair up to the back of the brush and this creates the reservoir, reservoir and you can paint for a while. You can still overload your brush, sure, but if we assume you have the right amount of paint on your brush, which should never really extend half of the paintbrush, you can paint for a while, then it's dry or not enough paint in there and you have to refill that. And that brings us to the first important step regarding paint. Do not go with your paint up to the ferrule. This is also common knowledge and there are thousands of videos out there explaining that. I just want to repeat it quickly because every the closer you get to the ferrule, the more paint will go in this area where this metal part is, the ferrule, and it will dry there and it will spread the um, hairs apart. And that will mean you will not have again a fine tip. And that particular part is extremely difficult to clean without using very aggressive ingredients um, or cleaning agents, um, which will then on the other side damage your, the hair of your brush. And to get back a fine tip is, from my personal experience, nearly impossible. What will happen is after a certain time you use your brush, it will start to look like this. I hope you can see this. I will show you later some better pictures. Um, because um, this is what will happen when you use a brush frequently. After a while, you will have particles and paint um, resting close to the ferrule. I even can see this with my bare eyes. There is some, there's a small ring of paint really close to the ferrule and to the hair. And this causes the brush to, to, to widen at the top here. Uh, it's not pointy anymore and there are two hairs to the side. So this is a, um, this is a Raphael Kolinsky hairbrush which I really like, size one. I cannot use this brush for fine details, although great Size at great size one and size two um, are my workhouse horses for 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 paint jobs. 
but still these brushes can be repaired and they can be reshaped a bit but if you reach that point usually your brush is more or less done so what can we do to extend the lifetime of your brush yeah i'm not telling you and this is not the purpose of this video hey use that method and you will have a point pointy head again it will definitely help and in some occasions it will allow you to come back to a real good um, pointy shaped brush but if you reached already have reached a point where your brush is very very damaged and you have paint in the ferrule might not work but let's talk about soap this is what you usually see in your hobby store in your hobby store you will have a wide range of soaps available there will be like at least I would say three to four different types of soap and the thing is what is the difference and what is brush soap and can you not use dishwasher soap or the soap you use for your hands or your your paint job um, cleaner or what else can you do what should you do and nobody is really explaining that to you and on some of these uh, some of these paint you have a little instruction how to do that how to handle it but what is the difference between all these brands and what does soap do in general so before we start with that acrylic paint this i assume you're watching this video as you want to use acrylic paint of course for oil paint it's a little bit different and for animals as well but let's assume you use acrylic paint acrylic paint is usually the pigment the binder and um, some master medium which is in there and you have the fine pigments yeah soluble in this in this mixture and even diluted with water when the water and um, the water evaporates um, our our color will settle and it gets these latexy um, surface and at that point it is very difficult to clean it's very very difficult with with soap in general yeah as long as acrylic color is wet you can easily um, clean it with water you all know that because we use water to dilute our paint. So what will happen now when we have like dried acrylic paint? Usually it's really like, okay, we have to rub it off, we have to scratch it off. We have to use much more aggressive methods like isopropanol works perfectly fine. Here in Germany you have usually uh, Sterilium. Um, it's, um, it's a hand sanitizer. Um, that works like a charm for the for, for for paint removal of miniatures. I use this personally frequently. Um, this works very good, but it's very aggressive to hair. From an art side, if they use really huge paint brushes, um, there is this trick to use heated vinegar. It will also help you and clean your brushes. But again. Heating your small miniature painting brush um, in vinegar will definitely not um, give you back a good shape. It will simply destroy the, the paintbrush. Um, so what can we do? So all these aggressive methods are not really applicable. And that leads to the silver line of this video. If you let your paint entirely dry in your paintbrush, especially coming up to the ferrule, the common methods and the different brands of paintbrush soap will not help you much. It will definitely solve this a little bit and as you can see later in our examples, but it will be an issue. So it's better to clean your brush directly after use. So overall um, using, using soap can extend the lifetime of your brush, it can condition your brush a little bit, it can keep your brush clean which allows more paint to connect to the hair of the paintbrush itself and simply you simply save money because your brush will be usable much more longer. But what is soap and what different kinds of soaps are out there? And as I mentioned before, there is a lot available and what should you do? So soap in general, it's a very basic product and you may have one or two friends in your surrounding you, you are even producing the old soap and selling them. For example, I just cannot come up with two friends who are, who are doing this since a while. So soap is very easy to, to produce. You, in general, you, you need an alkali substance like sodium or potassium hydroxide. You pour this in a heating, heated process on some, some oil or some fat 
usually vegetable uh, vegetable oil at the moment. Um, you can use whatever you have available. Um, people watching Fight Club know what I'm talking about. Um, so and this, you stir this a little bit, you let it cool, and then that's it pretty much. This is the basic recipe for soap, it's saponification. Um, of course, people are putting in much more ingredients like perfume and other substances in it. But this is just like the basic idea behind soap. Soap, the cleaning effect of soap, is by breaking up, mainly breaking up the water tension and between the water, the water molecules itself. So the water molecules can reach all these little areas and parts of your surface uh, much more easily. The second effect is um, a difference between um, a lipophilic and a, uh, a lipophilic, therefore hydrophobic um, end. It calls the, the formation of micellar. So this is like a sphere where the hydrophobic parts are inside the lipophilic parts inside and the hydrophilic parts are outside. So the water is around and you have these little um, balls, say that, enclosing the grease and the grime and the, the dirt particles. Huh? This is, um, these are the micella. Um, so this is the, and these get, get washed away. And that is in general the whole cleaning process or the cleaning effect of soap. Now it is getting interesting and now you see already Acrylic paint is not really um, um, so hydro hydrophilic in that case, or lipophilic, depending from what perspective we're looking at. So it's not that you put soap simply on dried acrylic paint and it gets gets um, gets diluted. No, that's not what you have. You've never seen that, right? So that means the little tension, the motion of your brush when you when you clean it, when you when you move the hair, this will break up the acrylic paint. The water can flow in all these little cavities and take away the 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 paint. That is the real process. Whereas oil paints and more lip, um, lipophilic paints are much more easily resolvable with soap. Now, you can see this if you just toast something or make you an, an egg in, in, in fry an egg and you use some butter or some oil if you push your put your dishwasher soap on top of it, you could, it it's, it's getting really easily cleaned this is exactly the second effect but for acrylic paint it does not really apply but it still breaks up the 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 bond between paint and hair now yeah? that is the important difference and I think you guys now realize that well if that's the basic cleaning idea what's the difference between all these different brands and that's exactly what i want to tell you and what you will see later in this video i will compare five different types of um, soap all have different prices some are very old some are very expensive and uh, new products and i will tell you a little bit more about my preferences so Thank you for this to give me time to explain this to you, but I think it's very important that you really understand that to avoid wasting your money. Yeah, there are many products out there um, which are which are which have very good marketing, um, but in the very end, it's all the same um, concept behind. Now we are coming to the differences. Okay, so there must be a difference, right? Yes, there are differences. If you look closely at the description of paintbrush soap, you will rarely find a lot of information. This example here, the Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver, is one of the few examples um, which has um, at least a little bit of, of an ingredient list here. And it says, okay, 15 to 30 percent soap, 5 to 15 percent ethylene glycol. So, ethylene glycol, what is that? Well, first of all, it's a very toxic substance. You can Google it yourself, but in the concentration and used here, it's not really a problem. But it's getting more and more banned from um, from from makeup products and, and and skincare products. It's still in there, but it's also used to de-ice airplanes. So it's just like not a substance you really want on your skin because. But the interesting thing is, it has a certain effect. It holds water, and it creates a little 
film of water over your paintbrush after you have used that one. It's nothing you can see, it's not wet, but it keeps um, on a molecular level um, water around the hair. Okay, But the problem is this comes at a cost and I'm not really a big fan of it. Um, it will slowly also take away the moisture out of the hair itself. So your brush will, will dry out over time using it. But honestly, this is a process taking so long that is usually way after the usually regular lifespan of a brush. Yeah? So I think it's something we can still accept. It's useful, um, and it's a, but it's a questionable ingredient for, for, for soap. But we use it for, for brushes. We are not using it on our skin, so fine. But check it out yourself. Um, there are some, um, some things you should know about that. Other soap. Are just containing the basic the basic materials like the scale 75 I will introduce to you later um, it's a very basic soap not smelling nicely it has no perfume in it um, but it does the job as well um, artis opus very hard block of of, um, of brush soap and an old Vallejo um, soap I use the master's brush cleaner as an example contains some perfume I have to say it smells really nice. Yeah, it's really nice. So if you do this and you're sitting there and you're cleaning your brush, you're not feeling like, ooh, that's disgusting. Okay, little advantage, but I think for me not really important. So the main ingredients are all the same. <coughs> so in the very end, I'm not expecting, I have to say, a big, huge difference between the cleaning abilities of these different brands. We'll see. Four different brush soaps for you. One is from Scale 75. This is um, the latest one I use. Usually comes for for roughly uh, like eight nine euro. If it's more expensive, sometimes you get this one cheaper. Um, that is um, that is uh, um, sodium uh, potassium hydroxide um, hydroxide soap. And as you can see, I just want to give you immediately the example about what I've spoken before. It is really soft. Uh, it's just like very, very soft. Um, it's like this kind of gluey uh, consistency. Um, then I want to talk about the Master's Brush Cleaner. Um, this is, um, like I told you before, a very popular one um, containing um, ethylene glycol. Um, much harder. Um, so you cannot really uh, press into it. Comes with a very, very, very um, pleasant smell. So third is the Gentastics Drunken Brush Coupe from Monument Hobbies. Uh, very difficult to get here in, in Germany. Um, also quite soft, not something I would say in between these the other two. Smell-wise pleasant um, but has a very light smell is advertised uh, made from from unicorns <laughs> and i have absolutely no idea about the ingredients um he is called and is a cleaner conditioner and reshaper um, but as i mentioned before um, marketing comes along good marketing comes a long way um, we'll see uh -huh. so how this will turn out the other one, this disgusting little something here, cube, is uh, a Vallejo, um, as far as I remember, honestly, a Vallejo um, piece of soap, very hard. Um, and as you can see, I use this quite, or have used this for a while quite frequently. Um, does the job, um, and I have, I have no idea for how many years I'm using this one now. So as you can see, you do not need a lot of brush soap. So that's for the for the start. Allow me to introduce two different products for you. This is the brush restorer from Vallejo. Um, and it especially tells us that this is for aquarelle, gouache, tinta, and different different paints. Um, you would theoretically put your put your put your brush in, of course, take something out, and you have to take care that your the tip of your brush does not um, 
yeah touches the ground so it's a little bit difficult to do um, to hold this in the position leave it overnight and it um, tries to to remove um, pain from the ferrule like i've spoken before honestly i have not used this one to good result and i'm really desperate i'm using it but um, maybe i'm using it wrong but um it does not is not doing the job for me it's yeah i don't know um the brushes i tend to use it for are already done so maybe i have to use it more um earlier um, or i'm using it wrong if you guys have a good advice for these for this product um please let me know the last product i want to talk about is the green stuff brush repair gel um this product um can be used on the tip of brushes to give them the final shape and if we look at it it has a very um yeah it has like a gel like consistency of course um but i have to say this is simply hair gel and they are selling this for like five euro or something um here at least in germany um, and you can buy like a whole 200 milli milliliter tube of hair gel for like 50 cents. So this is purely a marketing thing. It allows you to use this on a brush and slightly reshape your brush in a way that it comes more back to a, yeah, I would say the, the, factory, um, the factory style. But this is exactly the problem. I have now a very pointy, a very pointy, pointy, um, pointy brush again. But the moment I use it and put it in water, stir it, you will see this in a minute, unless this dry now, it will come back to the original structure. So um, this is maybe nice for storing your, your brushes because you can easily put the, the cap arm back on your brushes without the danger to really break the bristles and everything. But to label it as a re brush repair gel is for me, no, this is simply no. You can save yourself the money. Green Stuff World has a lot of great products, but this particular one, um, honestly, get rid of it, you won't use it. And we also will, as number five, I trust, uh, nearly forgotten this one, um, about the Artis Opus brush soap. Also very hard, and you cannot really find um, you cannot really find a list of ingredients. I don't know how much that is. Um, I received it in these Kickstarter brushes. I think you can still buy it on the website. Uh, honestly, it is so tiny. And it's too expensive again yeah it's just like you get this ridiculous little amount of brush soap which is in general okay it will last for a while but it's um it is just like come on yeah if you compare it with the other ones um absolutely uh, ridiculous somehow it's nice it's not taking away too much space but they also sell it to a quite steep price so let's see if it yeah <laughs> if it if it is really worth um, the money brush gel has dried a little bit so i have this nice pointy edge and i'm now pretending i will paint so i pour it into water um, maybe get a little bit of the surplus water uh, off and then i will start to to paint a little bit So, for example, let's take some paint. So, and now I'm starting to paint a little bit, do, 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 do whatsoever, and I do this for a while. And now I wash the paint off, and 
I start to, to, to clean the brush. And as you can see, it comes back to the it comes back to the to the kind of not any more pointed shape. Yeah? And it looks very similar to the other one. So for me personally, this is really not a huge gain. Yeah, you can have a little bit of pointy shape and as long as a little bit of the residue of the brush repair gel will stay in the brush, it's okay. Um, but use simply hair gel if you want that effect. So what we do, I usually take out a little bit of soap. I wetten, I wetten the brush and I smear the soap directly um, here on top into the hair I'm pulling and I'm twi twizzling a little bit. I'm not pushing towards the ferrule as I don't want to damage the, the brush. And when I've done that, I take a little bit more water and this is usually um, advice different companies are telling you really to twirl this around in the palm of your hand. Um, and I've done that. This out, see if I, uh, and as you can see, it creates residue. So there is still color in the, in the, in between the hair, which is coming out. And if I use this now to clean this up, you will see that there is clearly black grayish um, rest uh, in between the, the bristles. And it's getting soft, uh, it's getting soft. And as you can, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, you see little particles between the hairs. So um, the soap is breaking off the residue and bringing the particles, the debris, to the surface of the brush. So, let's do it again. Now you can even go for this soft soap directly into the pot. And next round. So, let's see. Yeah. No? As you can see, there is a lot of residue coming out. Yeah. And it's getting more the more I do that. So take your time, do not do it once, just like repeat this process. So I have done this now two times and I even see particles in there, but overall the brush is much cleaner now. I see this already. And let's see if I can bring it back to shape already. Well, not bad, I would say. Still not a pointy thing I can use for fine details, but it definitely did remove um, particles in the ferrule or in this area close to the ferrule. Um, I still see those, okay? So what I will do now is I will just like repeat this process a third time Okay, it's getting less, so I think this is the maximum, the maximum this soap can achieve. Yeah, still a little bit of residue coming out, but not, not much. So, looks quite okay, but I still see particles in there, um, but I don't want to do this more than three times. So let's, Let's, let's dry this and see what will happen later. So, now we are using the master's brush cleaner for a similar brush. Uh, now it's a uh, Winsor Newton, Series 7, quite expensive. Uh, here I cannot really, I have to to um, to, um, to use some water in the pot. 
<coughs> to get some soap and to make it foamy. And same procedure. Okay, nothing clearly visible here. Okay, still see some residues in here, but that one looks better. So what I will try now is to use the first brush and see if the master's cleaner can get rid of the residues we still have, we still have um, between the bristles. No, no real improvement. So I think that's pretty much it, what the soap can achieve here for three times. Okay, let's see how the master's brush cleaner, because it's so hyped, <clears throat> can he really um, help us with encrustic synthetic brushes. I mean, <clears throat> I do not have to smear this on the towel. You see already <clears throat> there is a lot of residue in here. Um, it's still smeared around the ferrule. But as you can see, the soap is cleaning that up too nicely. I can even use my finger here and it's <clears throat> quite clean on that area. So quite effective, quite effective, but still uh, something in here, reshaping it a little bit. Um, I would say definitely, definitely um, a good, good result. Uh, let's give it another round. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Color is getting less intense. But of course, we have removed a lot of residue. I will see if I can clean the ferrule a little bit. Mm, still, I, don't know, I think you can see this. There's still color which comes out. But nonetheless, good job for like two, three times. Quite okay. So. Now I'm using the, for me personally, one which I'm very excited, the Gentastic version. And I want to give this a hard try. Here's definitely some color in the ferrule. Um, this brush is, well, not entirely keeping a shape when it's wet. There's definitely a lot of color in there here. So let's see how Gentastic's goop is doing the job. Monument Hobbies, Red Grass Games, um, Paintbrush. Okay, interesting. I do not, well, a little bit of a few particles are coming off, but I have to say not much from the from the bristles. I still see here at the ferrule some particles in there which I have been unable to remove. I would say okayish, but not great. Okay, but maybe, maybe this is 
maybe this is just like something where there was something too specific on it this one is an artist opus series s one brighten brush um, as you can see really absolutely not in shape and even not holding this when wet so let's see if we can get some crap out of this of the bristles here yeah <clears throat> a little bit is coming off yeah as you can see my well, you most likely won't see this but there is a slight reddish pink um, tone to it so although i thought this was a very clean brush definitely working a little bit better just after one go but oh yeah, not significant so um something something i would to say about these brushes for example um i think as i can be much more rougher cleaning these brushes paint different brands of paint so brush soap won't make a huge difference so i will just like use this one because it's open now for the small dry brush here and we'll just see if it really cleans the the brush Yeah, definitely something coming off but still colored in here so let's see if the master's brush cleaner can get the job done of cleaning this thoroughly still the same let's try if this one is doing the job a mm, little bit more residue is coming off but it still keeps the color the pigments in there so let's use the old Vallejo one mm, a few particles but not very impressive no still <clears throat> the the tip it's clean pretty much but i would fear that um, if i would use it like this some of the gray particles will still be on the model i'm i'm painting so something uh, we have to work on a little bit more thoroughly so not as effective but counts pretty much for all soaps we have been using so far I'm coming back to this one in a minute. Um, I want to clean now and see if the artist Opus will clean this kind of clean brush because it is not anymore in shape. So let's see, no residues here. Let's see if we have taken something out. A mm. Little bit tainted, but not much. I think this one is was already pretty, pretty okay, or maybe something already in the ferrule. So, but nonetheless, this one is a Citadel standard brush and this one is heavily, heavily damaged. 
Yeah, it's just like really adding some gluey sticky stuff in there. So we try the Artis Opus here. Losing some hairs, okay, that can happen. Yep, definitely some things coming coming off, but this brush is really, I think, beyond repair. But still, cleaning it a little bit, but um, I think this one is done. So, <clears throat> let's see. Um, here we have also a heavily uh, used one, um, also this dry brush from Artis Opus. Let's see the bigger one, if it makes a difference here with the Artis Opus, their own brand, their own cleaning, cleaning soap. A little bit is coming off but not much uh, as you can see here it's still pretty encrusted so yeah so that is not a good result this is another very cheap dry brush and as you can see it's already more than half of it full with dried acrylic paint uh, so this one I use just like for for terrain. Oh, let's see um, how the master can solve that. A lot of a lot of dirt is coming out of that brush. But yeah, very clean here. Started already to clean a little bit the harder part. I think if we can leave it in here, let it soak, they will definitely come out, come out more. But I have to say this brush is, I think, not representative for, for our paint brushes because I'm using this much more careless. And if it reaches that point, it's nice that the bristles here will get clean a little bit, but it's not something I would really say, yay, uh, we can use it. Yeah. So looking at our brushes here, I've been sitting here for a while and dried. Uh, here you can clearly see paint uh, residues in there. Can I really can I really form a tip now? No, not really. Nah, it is just like already beyond repair. Um, if I wetten the brush, I cannot really make a good tip anymore. So even with thorough cleaning, if the brush is already at that state that this is really really uh, spread spread apart it's very difficult to do that even here you can see it's just like two little two little um, tips here and if I start painting with that theoretically um, it's not really keeping um, a nice pointy edge so the question is here at this point um, all these paints, all these, all these soaps have cleaned a certain amount of, 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 uh, of the hair. You won't get clean with water. That is good, but it's not that one was super impressive for the purpose here. So for the last trial, for the last, um, for the last example, I want to, I want to clean brushes I care and I use frequently. So. Let's go Let's go for one soap and one brush. So I have like my little box here with different brushes and that one reached a state where I would love to use it but it's still not 
performing anymore so well. So, these are four brushes to one Raphael, one Da Vinci Miniature Masters, Maestro 70, two from Green Stuff World, and one Serious Seam um, size one Winston Newton. So not the cheapest brushes. And as you can see, especially the big one here looks terrible. Um, I don't know what had happened to him. I haven't painted with that for a while. So let's see if uh, there is something in there I can I can repair. So all of these, besides the besides the the this one here, um, are not. They have been treated well, but I've used them for a while, and they are you see they are not really in shape anymore. So let's see if the individual individual brush soap will remove some residue from it and if we can use them afterwards and if they are in a better state okay so i start with the big one i simply choose scale and this time i will use the towel to really twirl it, to have a little bit of more structure here. So, no visual difference. Use some clean water to clean the brush. Nothing coming out really. And let's see if I can reshape it and use it. So, Green Stuff World, Vallejo Soap. little bit green uh, you might not be able to see that so there is something in there i'm now actually getting out and it's not the the color green from the block it's different green okay interesting clean and can be shaped back, but still I see some residues here at the close to the ferrule more than before. So I think this one could be brought back. This one, Green Stuff World. No particular color, maybe some brownish. Also quite good result, a little bit of particles visible, maybe with some pass through is much better. Next one, Raphael. Also some little bit of brownish skin color type residue in there. Yeah, a few particles. Let's see after a while. And last one, Green Stuff World. Oh yeah, there's a lot of coming out with the with the Gentastic um, soap. That one looked really clean, I have to admit. This surprises me. Okay, still a little bit. You can see this, you can see this, but there's definitely some color here. So that is very interesting, I think. The 
still. And let's reshape it. So I think even for for brushes um, for brushes um, that I would now start to remove, I think I can extend the the lifetime a little bit. So what is my recommendation here? Or do I have already an advice? Well, at this point, a little bit difficult um, as I have used different different brushes in different states. Let's try this one again. This was the most um, frustrating one as I can still see all the residue. And I will see if I can make a difference while using this here as a surface. Yeah, a few gray particles, but still not the result I had hoped for. So I might have to use some much more aggressive paint removers on this one and see if I can still use it properly. So if we're in this state, nah, not very good. So the question is now, is it worth doing it? And I would say, yes, it is. But it's definitely worth doing it after you have painted. After your paint session, when you are done for a day, take your brush, take the soap, give it a few, one or two rinses, bam, bam, bring it back in shape, use hair gel or the brush repair gel. I can do this as an example now. Yeah, bring your brush back in shape after you have cleaned it and store your brush. That will extend your lifetime. If your brush is already looking like this after some thorough pass throughs, it's very unlikely then you can get you get that you can get it back in shape. We have to be honest here. Yeah, with a little bit of brush repair gel, I can still try to form a tip. But I would say, if it looks like this, unlikely that you can get a fine back a fine tip. So you have to do this directly after you've done after you're done painting. Cut. So we have our results and as I told you before, I was not expecting huge differences and I think we have not been disappointed. All br paintbrush soaps have cleaned the brushes to a certain extent. If it's getting, if it's getting really too caked and old uh, paint, um, they reach their limitations. But every soap was able to get paint out of a apparently clean brush. And I think this is definitely an advantage because it will, to an extent, reshape your brush to this pointy edge. Um, as I mentioned before, if your brush is already done and you do not have a fine tip and everything and hairs are pointing in other directions, nothing will work. And even a brush soap and more intense cleaning will repair your brush. But it will extend your lifetime if you do this directly after painting. And that would be my summary for that video. Yeah, so start by um, having good brush care in terms of handling, keep your brushes flat on the ground or let them hang, use paint brush soap after your paint job when you are done for the day or the time you want to paint and that will help you. The question of you should use additional uh, substances like the brush repair kit green stuff world is selling is up to you i think this is a really a very expensive marketing product i it gives yes it reforms the brush a little bit at the tip but it's something in the moment you dilute it with water will will will, will be dissolved in water so the effect is clearly visible when you have freshly freshly um, uh, set up your, your paintbrush. I find it particularly useful to get your, your brush 
back into back into the tube yeah because if it's very soft and wet you might accidentally break some hairs here so if you have really a nice tapered end you can easily um, get this back into your into your tube and store it away so it's up to you um, it has less ingredients than standard hair gel but honestly from the ingredient side it is a hair gel so um, nothing which I think is worth five euro for such little little tube but up to you and I think the things we believe in these things are working so I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some insight about um, the the idea behind soap and behind um, brushes a little bit background information about acrylic paint uh, saponification and what you should use I mean there might be some secret and hidden tips you guys have please feel free to put these into the comments um, I'm excited to learn about your your ways your ideas and I hope um, you got out of this video with some helpful information bye bye